In this screencast, we're going to be looking at the stability analysis of linear systems. Now, the stability analysis in process control is a really, really important topic. And in this case, we're going to introduce the idea of stability in the context of just simply linear systems of differential equations. Because knowing whether or not a steady state is stable is very important because an unstable steady state First of all, it will be impossible to attain in practice. And second of all, if you're operating at a stable steady state and something changes and switches you to an unstable steady state, you could have a major problem in your system. Now, as we saw before, if you have a scalar system, first order, differential equation, the stability is dependent really just on the sign of the time constant. But what, we, what will we do if we have multiple equations? So this example here is going to be in the context of sorry, the example of this um, thermal mixing tank and a thermocouple, which is situated right here. And it's a temperature sensor, and we're going to look at the dynamics of both the uh, process itself and the temperature sensor. As before, we have the following for the specification of the streams, where we have the temperature and flow rates of both of these inlet streams, and then the outlet stream is initially at 50 degrees C. Now at time t equals zero, this inlet temperature switches from 25 degrees C up to 30 degrees C. And the question is, is this system stable? Will it reach a new steady state that is stable? So without going through the derivation of all the equations, I'm going to save that part for class. We're gonna jump ahead to the end of the, the example and talk about what, is the, what are the general things that we can take out of the stability analysis for systems of linear first order differential equations. First of all, the thing to note is that when you have a um, each variable in your system of first order linear differential equations, when you solve it as a function of t will look something like this. You'll have y of t equals to a linear combination of exponentials c1 e to the lambda 1t plus c2 e to the lambda 2t plus c3, e to the lambda 3t, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> Where the number of exponentials that you see is going to be equal to the number of equations in your system of differential equations. Every variable will look something like this with different values of c, but the lambdas will be the same. And so what you see is if you have a system of first order differential equations, in order to have a sta stable steady state, all of the exponential terms have to have negative exponents because if any of these exponents, any of these lambdas, are greater than zero, then this exponential term will dominate over time and you will have an unstable steady state. So how do we know what the values of these lambdas are if we're given a system of differential equations? Well, to, do, to find out what these values are, you should first put the system into matrix format. So what we have to do is put our coefficients of our variables into a matrix. So what do I mean by that? Well, to do this, you have several different steps. First, you define your vector of state variables. So what are your variables in your system? Now, there's a very important distinction here to be made between state variables, state variables, and other variables which may serve as inputs to your system. So in this case, the state variables are, well, in all cases, the state variables are the ones that, you're that you have differential equations for. So um, in this case, they would be T, the temperature, and the, s the temperature sensor value. And both of those are deviation variables, so I'm going to put hats over them. And so to define our vector of state variables, we say let this vector Y be defined as this, the first element element would be t hat, and the second element would be t sensor hat. Now we're going to write our system of differential equations with our time derivatives on the left-hand side and everything else on the right-hand side. So the differential equations are d t hat dt is equal to 1 over tau p, our process time constant, times kp t hat 1 minus t hat. Our second differential equation will be d t hat sensor dt is equal to 1 over t temperature sensor times t 
T hat minus temperature sensor hat. And as you can see, that's why these two are our state variables, because they T hat and T temperature hat, because this temperature sensor hat, because this is these are the two variables that we have time derivatives for. Now note that I wrote the time derivative or the two equations down in the order that I have them at, of, in my vector of state variables. Now the next step is to rearrange the equations so that each term is by itself and the state variables are in the same order left to right as they appear in the in the vector. So here's what I mean in this example. In the first equation we have our time derivative on the left hand side and our first term on the right hand side will be minus 1 over tau p times t hat. Now there's no um, temperature sensor, the second state variable, does not make an appearance in this equation, as you can see here. And so I'm going to kind of leave this spot blank. It's kind of like saying plus 0 t temperature sensor hat. And then the last term in the equation is plus 1 over tau p kp times t1 hat. Now note, note this is not a state variable, but it makes appearance an appearance in the equation and appears over there. In the second equation, time derivative on the left hand side, one over tau temperature sensor times t hat. Now notice because t hat is first in the order of state variables, then it will appear here in both equations as this first term. And the second term is a negative 1 over tau temperature sensor times t hat sensor. And both of these terms line up too. So the temperature sensor is the second variable in the state variables. And so it is the second term on the right hand side of the equation. And there's no other extra term here in the second equation that doesn't correspond to either of the state variables. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to identify the coefficients of each one of our state variables for both equations, and we're going to put them into a matrix. So in the first row of our matrix corresponds to our first equation, and the second row of the matrix corresponds to our second equation. So I'll call my matrix A, and I'm going to say that's equal to minus 1 over tau p and 0. And note those are the coefficients of my two state variables in the first equation. The second row of the matrix will correspond to the coefficients of my two state variables in the second differential equation, 1 over tau temperature sensor, and then minus 1 over tau temperature sensor. Now just for completeness, once you have this matrix, you can fully put your whole set of differential equations into matrix format, and it'll look something like this, where the time derivative of your state variable is equal to the, your matrix that you just made times your vector of state variables, plus this f, which is your vector of inputs. These are the things that are not the state variables. These are the things that are going to make your equation non-homogeneous. And in this case, we have f is equal to this vector here, 1 over tau p, kp, t hat 1, and 0, because there's no extra input non-state variable term in the second differential equation. Now just to wrap this up at this point, in this example, this matrix A, these lambda i's end up just being the elements in the diagonal. So the, lambda, the first lambda i is negative 1 over tau p, and the second lambda i is negative 1 over tau ts. Now note, both of those are negative, and so the system is stable. Um, these lambda i's are what's called the eigenvalues of this matrix A. Now in more um, difficult examples, you can't just read the eigenvalues off as the diagonal elements of your matrix. So in that case, you have to um, put your matrix into MATLAB and then use this function for to find the eigenvalues of A. And if all of those are negative, then you'll find out that your system is stable. If even one of them is not negative, if it's positive, then you have an unstable system.